What's up, Collider TV Talk fans? We're here for a special edition of a season review. We're doing Bloodline Season 2. I'm joined by some awesome people who just recently finished all 10 episodes of Season 2. You guys know me, Josh McCuga, hosting uh, Collider TV Talk every Monday. Let me introduce the panel. Uh, over here on my far right, Mr. Christian Harloff. Hey, and everybody should obviously know if you haven't, you hopefully have watched this whole season. Spoiler, spoiler heavy. Yeah, very spoiler heavy. Uh, to his <laughs> left. <laughs> what? <laughs> Fuck off. Uh, I'm the Ben Mendelsohn of the crew, if you guys don't know. Uh, Mr. Mark Ellis. I, I literally just got done watching this season five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Wow. My head is spinning. There's so much to talk about. Absolutely. And my co-host every Monday on TV Talk, the lovely Sasha Pearl Raver. So if you screwed up the intro, wouldn't that make you the Kevin of TV Talk? <laughs> because he ruins everything, you guys. Yeah. Kevin everything. is the worst. Hey, if All there's right. going to be one Kevin on this show, it's going to be me, <laughs> damn it. Kevin should be wrestling gators. He really should. Yeah. He should be eaten by a gator. Kevin yeah. should be worst. playing bass in Van Halen because he looks exactly yeah. like Michael Anthony. <laughs> Google it right now. Thank me later. We have uh, concurred that he does, in fact, look like Michael Anthony. Everything always comes back to Van Halen <laughs> when it comes it to Mark Ellis. <laughs> Uh, let's start. I think maybe the easiest way to start this is how would you compare it to season one, Christian? Uh, I don't really think it compares to season one because I don't think anybody on the panel is going to say, maybe I'm wrong, uh, it's not as good as season one. No, because oh, I, am I? Really? <gasps> See, because am I? For, for me, what I think, and I will start by saying that I did enjoy this season, but the thing is, as where season one, you had Danny who was very flawed and there were things about him that you could kind of relate into what you liked about characters like Walter White and Tony Soprano. Like, they were flawed characters, but yeah, there was something still about them and that's kind of what Danny was becoming. Even though he's doing these despicable things, you liked him and that's obviously because of the brilliance of Ben Mendelsohn as well. This season didn't really have someone like that. You got Danny in flashbacks, but none of the characters are really good people. Like, because now you, you, John is someone who was really good, but even in season one, it's like, was he or was he like an image of what he thought he should be? But in two, he's just spiraling down a dark hole, and Kevin is a fucking mess. Um, yeah. <laughs> and we, and like we, did, everyone's at, Sissy Spacek is kind of clueless. The kid, though, the kid, Danny's kid, Dan, who looks it's good casting, just like him, great really casting, good casting. Started out um, where I was worried because I was like, okay, this is just going to be some gimmick that they're going to do because they're like, uh oh. They want to find some way to bring Danny back. So they got the kid and it's like, oh, he's going to be rotten too. But they didn't. He actually, there was a goodness to him as well. And you found it his story as it went down. So I liked kind of how it de developed. And I was talking to you about this, Makuga, is that I was, uh, my wife was a big fan of the show Parenthood. And this show reminds me of the really screwed up version of Parenthood. Right. I was invested in all the characters, so I still continued to be invested throughout this show. I understand where someone's going to say it was a bit boring and there wasn't, uh, but I, to me there was just something about it that I was invested enough from these characters from season one that I really watched, uh, enjoyed watching this season. Yeah, I'll go to Mark. I mean, I, I've, I'm on the similar plane as you, Christian. I think there's some definite things about this show that make it far less of a soap opera than it actually is. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll like, Mark, what did you think? You're fresh off the last episode. Thank so. you, Josh. Um, <laughs> the big hurdle that you had to get over to enjoy season two is that it's no longer about Danny and what's going to happen to Danny because Danny was such a central figure in season one that now we know he's dead. And so what, what are we going to possibly do in season two? And what it did is the most uh, maybe uh, complicated part of a conspiracy is not the actual conspiring and it's not the act that you're conspiring to do which in this case is Danny's death it's how do you continue to cover it up because it's one thing to be able to pull it off and they did that but how do you maintain the cover up and and you know that that old saying that Benjamin Franklin coined is that three can keep a secret if two are dead and that's what I kept ringing in my head throughout this entire season is ben that Franklin dark Drop dude no, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, wow. and I don't look like I'm the guy at the bar in Islands who just has quotes that he yeah. just pulls out well of he is ass. from Virginia Ben Franklin so. was a gangster <laughs> <laughs> my family did live in Panama City for a little bit of time when I was about yay high mm. so what this season did so well is that yeah Mendelssohn pops in there and he's great when he's in there but it made me care, however unlikable these characters may be, you start out the season rooting for them. Yeah. And as it continues, you're like, stop doing this, don't do that. Ah, I guess you gotta make that play because they're human beings. They're not evil people, they're not good people. They're human beings and they're very complicated. And to watch somebody like John or his sister kind of spiral out of control, to watch Kevin
happen immediately go out of control <laughs> and then make an attempt to get it back together to watch all these other characters that I didn't know were going to come to play or have as big of a role as they did somebody like Marco where it's like you're watching where his arc is going and he's an actor who I didn't think was that strong in season one because well, he, he didn't really have really, a part in season one but he was necessary yeah. particularly oh, crucial, towards the yeah. end of this season and I was really impressed with the acting job that everybody did I will contend that Sissy SpaceX character is not clueless she puts on the blinder sometimes but she is keenly aware you can see in her eyes that she knows there's things that her family isn't telling her and she tries to a lot like the uh, the, the metaphor of the shower that never really works and she just kind of blocks it out she's thinking I know that there's stuff that's going on that's not working right and I'm going to try to block it out and focus on something else but at the end she can't help but realize what her family has become I loved most things about this season I, I think am- the shower is broken down I mean it's like the, the Rayburn family is, is broken down I yeah. think that that's kind of oh really sure yeah. sure now Sasha Pearl Raver who yeah. had, leading off on oh, I emailed you originally post episode three for you yep. you didn't want to do this because you didn't want to keep watching this show yeah but we forced you into this situation. <laughs> yeah. We have made you into the Meg Rayburn of this of this panel. Sasha Pearl Rayburn. <laughs> yeah. I'm so drunk right now, you guys. Sasha <laughs> Pearl Rayburn. Man, is she a bad acting She's drunk? She's the worst drunk. I love Linda Cardellini, and her fake drunk is terrible. It's bad. She was yeah. really hammered, actually. <laughs> she should have been. Uh, so I am here to be the voice of reason. Yeah. So, like everybody has said. Or the, the thing, voice of your reason. My reason. <laughs> the Ben Mendelsohn was outstanding. If he doesn't win the Emmy, it will be a huge shock. He was the Tony Soprano. He was the Walter White. The thing is, is I think that these characters are intensely one-dimensional. And I think that when we got to the season series finale, season finale, maybe series, and we see that Marco knew, Sissy Spacek knew, there's that horrible scene in like, the I want to say, knew? well, there, that's like episode six or seven. There's this terrible scene with Jacinda Barrett and eight. Kyle Chandler, and they're just having this like Mexican standoff of the eyes in the driveway. And it's like a six minute long scene. And she looks, and he looks, and she looks, and he looks, and then she says, you know, if you're going to keep us safe, then don't tell me. Or He's like, you'll be safe. And just that scene for me summed up what was wrong with this show. It's always been a slow burn. I don't have a problem with the pacing. I don't have a problem with a slow show if it's a great show. But I felt like this was predictable, kind of silly at times, a little bit lazy. And you you made a huge mistake, a critical error by killing the best part of your show. We knew that he was dead. We knew he was dead by the end of the first episode of season one. Yeah. Why stretch that? into only the like what they killed him in the 12th episode of season one i think he was almost they showed him in the episode one that he was yeah. dead yeah it, it was, was hard to tell so exactly why not what was going it on into the second yeah. season well, it was a mystery. It doesn't... because the first season i think was more of a mystery right yeah. um as where this was just straight up like kind of they just changed the direction of the show as more as like more like a thriller kind but of but the I thing think... is is you're talking about like these characters who are trying to keep it together and trying to suppress it then how come every single one of them blows it up in the end And why would you run for public office if you're trying to keep a huge secret under wraps? And why would you give up the good job that took you to New York because you keep fucking things up if you're really, really trying to escape your demons? And Kevin, I can't even start with Kevin. Every time Kevin's on screen, I'm just like, I will shoot you myself. Give me a dolphin statue to beat you over the head with because I hate you. It's funny you bring that up because the, the problem that I had with this season initially is once John Rayburn decides to run for sheriff I'm, I'm watching in my head I'm thinking all right I can kind of spin this into I believe why he's doing it this is going to be my one uh Indiana Jones refrigerator bomb scene where I can get over that but everything else in the show has to be great and for in, in large part it was I get why he's running for office. I get that he's he's kind of saying, you know what, F you, I did this because I had to, and I'm going to put this right out there, and I'm just going to get this over with. And once I become sheriff, if anything, if there's any other loose ends that are going to come up, I'll be able to tie them because I'll have more power. I understand that he had to look like nothing was wrong, so instead of just laying low and saying I'm not running for sheriff, he went ahead and is like, no, 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 I got nothing to hide, I'm running for sheriff. And in response to the one-dimensional character thing, I think a lot of these characters their goal was to be one dimensional. Their goal was to simply be a Rayburn. I want to be the cop Rayburn. I want to be the lawyer Rayburn. I want to be the boat fixer Rayburn. And because of what they did in season one, their actions would not allow them to maintain those roles. So you're watching them unwittingly unravel before your eyes in season two because they're forced to be three dimensional. Yeah, it's a very nice compliment, but I don't think the I think you imbued that into bad writing and lots of pregnant pauses. Solid chance I did that. Solid <laughs> chance. <laughs> 
<laughs> Mark just learned what the word imbued meant as he well. He also he, learned what pregnant <laughs> meant when it imbued. wasn't. Well, imbued. he didn't learn it yet. He's, he's, he's going to research he's it. Research yeah. it. Yeah. What about uh, you, Makus? No, okay, here's the thing is I, I'm all on board with most, like each one of you hit different points that I wanted to hit. A lot of this, a lot of this season felt like telltale heart. It felt like Edgar Allan Poe's mm. telltale heart. Boom! Is, is you see... Uh, the death of Danny, that heartbeat underneath the floorboard, tearing apart the family one at a time. Listen, yeah. if you took away Kevin, Kevin is the is the brother. He he's the drunkle. He's the you know he just shows up at parties and he he messes everything up. He, he became farts. Danny. He did. He farts in the jello. But he's not as interesting. No, he's as not. Danny. But he's not I'm, as he's interesting not. as I'm Danny. Not, I'm not saying he is. Yeah. He, <laughs> you you went from Edgar Allan Poe to do he fart into the jello. Well, that's, what, no, that's what that is, that's what Ben Franklin said he about did. Edgar Allan Poe. You imbued a fart into <laughs> the jello. George, George Washington. Jello. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know he's the perfect guy to wear like these sunglasses and be the boat fixer guy and like do coke in his little boat fixing house. You know what I mean? Uh, you miss a lot of like dangling cigarettes from from Danny. But what you what you really <laughs> got was the introduction. I think what really helped us. You got the introduction of the son, the the mistress that had like his baby mama and Jake John Leguizamo carried this there you season. go John he Leguizamo was the Danny was the to this to this season every time he turned up he's a charming dude like in a lot of movies when he's the nice guy John Leguizamo is the nice guy he's great he's a stand-up comic he does his one-man shows he does all this kind of stuff he plays the creepy gangster uh, with the greasy hair, always always sweating a little bit driving a freaking Danny's old car and creeping out Every person he talks to via dialogue and looks, right? Just like certain words that he throws in there. I thought that was the best writing of the season. I will say, mm -hmm. if you're going to kill your brother and you're a sheriff and you're running for sheriff, you're supposed to be this guy that knows everybody in town, everywhere you go, and you just figure out that there's cameras where you killed your brother, <laughs> that's pretty bad cop work, yeah. right? Well, there were a couple of mistakes like that. The other big mistake was Meg when, she, when she's like, she, obviously Marco has been leading this investigation. She's like, yeah. so give me a name. Give me a name. Call him Ralph Biscuits. Yeah. Don't tell oh him the God. real. Don't tell him the real name because obviously I knew right away when she gave the name. Oh, he's gonna call him. Yeah. How does oh she not God. know? She was married. She's almost married to this guy. But yeah. the other thing, you know, you mentioned like Wasamo. I got shades of Carlito's way. Oh from yes, because he was great in that in that movie as a kind of evil drug lord. Again, Very different in South role, Florida. but still, yeah. Um, and he's been crushing. And he was also great in Chef. Different role, yeah, but just oh, his performance yeah. has been yeah. great. But don't you dare forget about Lloyd Bridges. Lloyd Bo Bridges. Jeff Bridges. Uh, Bo Bridges. Bo Bridges. Bo Bridges. Oh my God. I said Lloyd. Just name Bo all Bridges. of them. It's oh. fine. Oh, don't you forget about all the Bridges. <laughs> Danny <But> Baldwin. Lloyd, <laughs> yeah. Jeff, no. and then Bo. 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 Bo Bridges. He was the fabulous Sorry, Baker Mr. Bo. Bridges. Bo yeah. Bridges in this show to me was scary, comforting. Everything about him that he embodied this guy, I knew it from that kind of just creepy, powerful, well, oh, just invoice, and, just invoice me. Yeah, and just yeah. everything yeah. that, he, and like when he, but the creepiest part was when he brings the the contract to Kevin. Kevin's, he's just like, no, no, no take your time, take your time. And he's, no, 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 if you need some more time, it's fine. He signs it, he just walks away. He goes in to shake his just, hand. Yeah. Kevin tries to shake it, then, and then he just that's it. it. Yeah. He goes some other, goes some other time. But and this then, is yeah. the biggest problem with this season because my favorite parts of the season were John Linguizamo, mm -hmm. Chloe Sevigny. Yeah. And Bo Bridges, you guys, none of them are primary characters. Yes, yes. that's why. The, but that's why, if this goes to a third season, they're going to have to do major overhauls because I don't care about any of the Rayburn characters. I really don't. Oh, I only well, cared about I, Danny. I, I, I totally disagree that you don't care about the Rayburn characters because, like, like Makuga said, which was brilliant. We're all pointing above our heads and making <laughs> references so far in this review. Is that you? Even if you don't like them as people, I still like. I'm, I'm living and dying with every move they make and that's what hooked me into this season yes it is soap opera -y, and i love the way that these ancillary characters have come into play like Bo bridges and one of the things that i loved in the subplots is that he brings in that team that is running illegals into the into the country and they're basically human trafficking so now it's going to take place on kevin's stock maybe those are the people that helped kevin get out of the situation that he got himself into right at the end of this season which i i hate to say is something else that disappointed me is watching kevin pick up the dolphin Oh, and yeah. so I, Kevin, Kevin's arc had resolved itself. Yeah. He was he he became a cokehead overnight. And he was drinking too much. He was losing his business, and he was uh, messing up his relationship and estranging his himself wife. from his unborn kid. Yeah, yeah. She's the, she you know what she's the one person that's probably ha, is like the, the most real and nice person. Not yeah. real, but the like the, the a good person. Yeah, I think she's Kevin's getting wife. just shit canned by yeah. friggin' 
uh, Kevin. But he was get, but, but he got it. Him. But he got it together. Bad he got it together. He was controlling himself. He was going to meetings. He got clean. He got sober. He was a little nervous. So I thought that it was just going to play out between him and what's going on with my doc now that I no longer have control over. So him picking up the dolphin and whacking Marco, it's like it just made no sense that he was the guy because the restraint that John Rayburn showed when he, I thought he was going to pull the trigger and I thought he was going to kill Eric O'Bannon and then, and then he was going to have to cover that up too. The the fact that he was able to show restraint and that Kevin wasn't, it's like we already went through that with this that's season. Like, well, that's when I go when back Kevin, to Sasha said. Yeah, when, when Kevin went to go uh, tell Lowry everything or, yeah. or, or, or try to you know make things nice with Lowry, that was the move that Kevin made in the season. Where I'm like, yeah, you dopey brother, don't do that. Him doing it again, I just didn't buy it. Yeah, see, for the most I, for the most part, for everything, the one thing, I, I agree with Sasha and disagree with one thing. I disagree in the fact that I think that the Rayburns, the whole point is that the Rayburns continuously make bad decisions. All of them. Kevin does it in monumental ways yes. that every single the guy More can obvious ways. The guy can tie a shoe and he yeah. screws something up. <laughs> as where John There's John, talking, John, my John, shoe. My shoe. Wrong man. Ah, the, the there's reason, supposed to be slip on. There's right. a dead guy in my shoe and, again. And the oh guy, shit. Yeah. And the guy cries the guy cries more than Tobey Maguire in Spider Man three. Yeah. Um, but but you, you know, know Kevin. When you have but John Rayburn though, the reason why he ran for office is because of exactly what you're saying. It was more of like an F you I fixed everything in my life I have fixed everything with my family he's even said as much in one of the episodes and I'm going to fix this and it's not going to be a problem I will fix it every way that I can and even when like, he says things with confidence sometimes when he's not really confident so I actually thought John even though there was he, the way that it ended towards the end where he's driving off with Danny the ghost to Danny we'll find out it was kind of like a, right now, an anticlimactic yeah. ending right but the thing was I agree with and setting up another season yes and I agree with both of you guys though that, that the, the thing with him with uh, Kevin hitting Marco and killing Marco Marco, it did seem out of place, and it also seemed like the writer sitting in the room going, "We need something. Yes, we, we need something big. We need something big. Yeah. Because okay. There's no moment thought. because he, just John driving away is no. not going to do it. How about Kevin kills Marco? Right. And then it's like it now you weird. got a lot okay, of problems. So Here's, let's say you're sitting in the writers' room and you have to pitch a third season. What would you pitch? <sighs> Well, okay, here's how I thought the season was going to end, is I didn't think that that was going to go down. But I thought Kevin's going to try to confess. Mark is going to be like, F you, and I'm going to go talk to O'Bannon tonight. Then I thought Ray, I thought John Rayburn was a danger to himself. I thought when I saw the keys, yeah. you're not leaving the keys, I thought he was leaving the keys the other way. I thought he was going to drive his truck off a bridge and try to take the ghost of Danny down with him and take, and take a bullet for his family because he keeps talking about how I'm the one that does everything. I fix things in my family, and if that means ending his own life to save everybody else and put all the weight on him, I thought he might consider that. And then in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, yeah, this is a TV show. They want to have a third season. So I get why they have to have one big exclamation point, then a bunch of open, loose ends. If I'm pitching season three, I'm very confident because I'm going to that writer's room knowing that other people who created this season know where they're going to take the character of Kevin, why the death of Marco is going to play into a future season. I have confidence in the writing, but I do feel like that was a little, uh, it was a little shoehorned in and it felt out of place with the things that I had seen up to that point. I keep thinking that they're going to go like uh, the, oh, I should take this out. Yeah, probably. Um, they, <laughs> I think they keep going, like I keep thinking they're going to go the route of like each each, they're gonna do four seasons and each season one of the siblings dies. So like Danny died first season, John dies second season, Meg dies, and then well, John finally didn't die. Kevin. He I know he doesn't die. That's, that's, that's what I thought was okay, gonna okay. happen. Oh, right? That would have been cool. And maybe that that's been cool. maybe that's what they were trying to do, that yeah. may, it just didn't have the impact that we wanted it to, because it, it, like you can't end season one and have Danny dead. And then end season two and just have a bunch of loose that like somebody had to die, right? Well, it's, yeah. He's just a bad cop. Like if you're if you've investigated murders, you've been on, you're a sheriff, and you pull off a murder, you got to find a way to make it look like something happened. It was an accident, and you killed him. Like or you were there when he killed him, and you came with the body so that you you because you. But remember, he had a heart, but, but he he had a panic attack and he broke down. Like they like he said, like maybe he would have if he had his marbles on, but he was distraught. It wasn't like this yeah. hardcore kind of killing thing. It was emotion. It was, that's why I was kind of torn between the season with Marco because because my wife texted me. She's like, "Why are we rooting for John? We should be rooting for Marco." I'm like, "Not really." Marco kind of Marco did a lot of the same stuff. Marco did the, Mar that you, whole man. line that he did where he basically just turned his his cheek away from the woman who was getting her ass kicked because he wanted a job. Well, that was a smart play by the writers yeah, to, by make, the, to to give Marco a tragic it, flaw. It, too. it was, and that, that's and and he's also turning against the family because it is personal for Marco. The whole it thing is personal him for him. And and it was, but that, that, so 
like I said, the, Marco is by no means a good guy. As where John, I still think in his core, wants to do a good thing. But once you go down that path, you can. Now, to answer your question as far as what I would fix, I'd have two, I'd have two options here because you're in trouble for what you're going to do here. Unless you're going to have John come back somehow and they're going to be chasing him around. The options are you, you somehow find a really A-list actor to come in as like an uncle or whatever it might be to manage the Rayburn house and someone who was electric as an actor mm -hmm. and he starts to manage the Rayburn affairs and he's the one that kind of gets it. Maybe he's got to go against uh, Bo Bridges, whatever it might be, he or she, who come in and they it's another Rayburn that we haven't met yet. It can't be a kid because we've learned about all the kids. I hear Nick Cage is available. <laughs> oh, I hear, uh, oh, I am a Rayburn! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but the other thing is, the show is called Bloodline. Who says the show has to be about the Rayburns every season? Right. So if you wanted to, you could find another powerful family, tying it in from the Rayburns in season three into this brand new family, and then making a more interesting family, because now you have the option of really creating brand new characters in this new family in Bloodline that can, they can get away from the mistakes that they made of making all these one-dimensional characters. So I don't disagree with you there. There are, but I, I was invested in all of them that I still cared, but I don't think that I would continue to care if it's just the same type of thing plotting along in season three and four. I like that fix. What uh, about you, Makos? Yeah, I think, you know, the one dimensional part that, that pissed me off about each character. Okay, we talked about Kevin. He's a fuck up. Meg, she's just, she just can't get out of her own way. She's the, you know, the little sister that just kind of got batted around a little bit. She's the smartest probably of the group. Easily, yeah. Uh, easily the smartest. John went season one. I actually like John. Season two, he is just an asshole the whole time. Like, there isn't a part where he's like running for sheriff. He's like, just look and do it. You know? <laughs> it's like, dude, everybody is hiding a huge secret for you. They're trying to get you elected sheriff. The least you could do is be a little thankful. But I thought that was realistic. I mean, the guy committed murder yeah, of his own brother. I like, think no, the other thing I'm that wasn't realistic, and this was another thing that was a thorn in my side the entire time I was watching it. Danny was a massive, massive embarrassment to the family. He was always gone. People hated him in that town. He was considered the black sheep. If he showed up dead in a burned out boat, a million people would have been like, he had it coming to him. Yeah. Why would they have cared that much? Yeah. Well, Why would they... it's, still, it's still a small town. It's still, they would have cared much because of the family name. Right. And the somebody's somebody's running, running, Kennedy, expected it for him. Somebody's running against already... this guy for sheriff, too. I mean, it, it's... You, Roger you, Clinton you, just got arrested. They're still you, talking about him. You pull, <laughs> you pull any string you can to, to, to get a political advantage. And I would really dispute the notion that these are one-dimensional characters. When you look at these guys, yes, they each have their core role that they play within the Rayburn family family but something that is genius about this show is that when you watch sissy spacex sometimes she has a little bit she has shades of danny in her personality sometimes she has shades of john or meg or kevin and when you look at particularly john but all of the kids you see those shades in them sometimes usually john is the asshole who's like no i did this for us i'm gonna keep doing this i'm a cop i'm a good guy but sometimes he'll veer into Danny ter the territory. They all do. They veer into something that is a little off kilter for what that one dimension that they usually employ is. And I love watching when those things manifest themselves on the show because it gives it such a deeper layer. When John is doing his copisms, I love that stuff. When he's he knows that he's backed into a corner, but he still has enough cop experience to be like, I'm not going to show. His poker face is really, right. really good. Which right. is why the scenes with Marco were really interesting. Mm -hmm. And right up until the end but I kept thinking about the episode in season one where um, uh, Sam Shepard has a heart attack yeah but we don't know if Danny's killed him or if he had the heart attack and it's not until the end of that episode that we get like a really big window into the soul of a character and I never felt like I got that in this season I kept waiting for a moment like that I kept waiting for one episode a little bit of redemption here or there redemption or just like a real view into who these characters were outside of their pathos and I think Sissy Spacek is incredibly undervalued and very underutilized I mean mainly she's, she's just such a bad... she sees it she sees what's going on and you can tell that she knows what's going she's on which is on. why she's when blinded. Meg walks 100%. in and says there's something you should yeah. know yeah. she hugs her with this look of Bitch, I already know. Mm. And I just wanted there to be at least one episode where narratively you could reveal something huge without bringing in somebody like a Bow Bridges, but still keeping to the core three or four members of the family and make it 
that profound and that interesting because you need to Mendelssohn one of these main people and it should be Kyle Chandler. I think we got a little bit of that with Mendelssohn's kid or with Danny's kid because Danny's kid he shows up and he's an asshole he's a punk ass I, I want that kid off my lawn I want him to get away <laughs> stupid piercing you know <laughs> there is more about but him but then yes. you, you they start to peel back the layers and you see why he developed Evangeline but again, was a vision but again not you know? a primary character from the first season right. I'm and saying we I need that from a first I, season I'm trying character. to not think in my head the last yeah. time we saw him he's crying and yeah. he's talking to to Sissy Space? Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, John's wife. He, he's talking to John's wife, yeah, which is. Who well, hides her Australian the, accent pretty well. No, she does. Oh, my God. It's a joke. It's the worst. But it's like, Danny. Oh, Danny. 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 It's a joke. What's wrong with Johnny? Danny. Yeah. Yeah. Danny. Um, Cinder Barrett. She, she, and Real she is. Though. If we're talking about one dimensional <laughs> characters, she is the most one dimensional that the writers could. And, you know, and we've talked about on TV talk, we've talked about many a thing. The, the way they write teenagers in like 98% of shows is the worst. And that girl, Janie, is the worst. Janie annoys me. <laughs> she, Wait, yeah. I want my necklace. <laughs> Because it's mine, and Danny gave it to me. She really turned like quick. Quick. Yeah, like, you turned guys on her whole family. Doubt she, this is how teenage. I don't know, but she, act. She, but she but turned she on her family. The grandmother really quick. quick. Yeah. The that grandmother seems... attacked her too. The grandmother slapped her because she basically. Oh, come on. She it. <laughs> What's the deal? <laughs> this is basic. Does she know? Does she don't? I mean, come she on. Knows. The shower's still broken. <laughs> Is it an um, accent? Wait. Is it real? <laughs> <laughs> What's the deal with Donnie? Donnie! Donnie! Uh, Who's Donnie? Uh, I think, you know, th this this show, uh, and the reason why it doesn't have, it, it isn't exactly a soap opera, is the way that it's shot. It is shot really well, I think. It's directed really well. Oh, there's a lot of really dirty shots. There's a lot of really long wides. All the little sound effects. Yeah. All the sweat. Like I, the I, I, sweat. I think I tweeted this wind. last season. Is that the reason why I'd be great on Bloodline is because there's two things I'm really good at. Okay, Making it's drinking funnies. beer and sweating on camera. Yeah. 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 And that's all you need to be great on this show. And sweating it feels and like you're cigarettes. in Florida. It yeah. does. It feels like it I'm is. There. It's tactile. Really mm -hmm. tactile. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. What's screwed up is when I watch Bloodline. My primary takeaway is I want to go to the Keys, you yeah, guys. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so screwed. What I find interesting, though, too, this isn't just you. This is a few different people. Like because season one, I think we all agree was great. Yes. Yeah. The fact that because I heard you said season three, hopefully you don't even want to see it happen. I I wouldn't watch it which unless is, you guys force me which to. Is we can do which is one crazy of these. though because you're normally like a beloved show. Yeah. Um, when a season two disappoints you hope for the third to pick it back up if it's going to at all but you're not the only person though that i've heard say that, like i said i enjoyed this season would you I, say disappoints was, would you say this for me no i was not Good. disappointed in the season Good. i enjoyed the season but i do understand criticisms and i think all of sasha's criticisms were valid as far as her perspective on, on, on the way she saw it but i also saw, thought a lot of the way that you that you described like the the ways that the characters kind of go through their particular emotions and what they're doing, I, I can understand how you enjoyed it. So it's it's funny how you just, yeah. there's some shows that everybody universally goes, that sucks. I, now this one, I'll tell you though, a lot of people don't, a lot of people good. don't like season two though. Yeah. And that's because I think season one was so good and that maybe people had seen your perspective and the ones that liked it, maybe see ours a little bit more. But I do think the Rayburns have more stories to tell, but I don't think that they can tell them the same way just, they're doing it now. Ooh, They've I want switch this, it up. I, I, I want to see this, I want to see where John was driving. Of course you I want to see, see him, but I, I want to see this Rayburn family, I want to see this clan have another season to tie up all of these things that are going you gotta on. Add some kind of dynamic. Somebody. Yeah. You need somebody Lake new. You, you need a Lake Wazama. You need another Bo I think Bridges. you need some I think you need someone even bigger and better than those guys. I'm talking about like a list star, like what they did in like I didn't see Peaky Blinders, but when you put a Tom Hardy in season yeah. two, mm -hmm. if you bring it, this won't happen. But imagine in season, in, like a, a cousin comes in and it's Fastbender. Yeah, you know, like uh, something right, along those lines. But then you go lines. down the True Detective season two line, and then you've got major stunt casting and a terrible story. And one of my big concerns with a season three is when this show started, this new season, and Meg was in New York. That was one of my big problems is it's supposed to be in the keys. It's supposed to be this family home. It's supposed to be this bloodline. At so to point, now see John in Miami or wherever he's going to end up, like somewhere in the panhandle of Florida, mm -hmm. I feel like that in and of itself is detrimental because you are taking away but from the primary coming, you conceit. You know he's going to come. That's the thing about this place. That's the thing about the Rayburn house is that it, it, it's, it's got this energy where it always draws the kid. It drew Danny back in season one. It drew Meg back in season two. It's going to draw John back in season three if he doesn't crazy, drive his car off a bridge. There's two things, though. The crazy thing is that we really talked about is that O'Bannon was pretty much saying, like, I'm talking now or I'm out. And then then he gets then what's Marco gets killed. So 
First of all, do we think, though, that because I can't imagine Kevin being able to clean up that mess no. and there's blood everywhere. But I can imagine so, Bo Bridges' boys being able to do now it. That's probably, <laughs> but that's probably yeah. true because we see Lugos Amo get picked up by Bo Bridges. So they'll probably clean it up. Mm -hmm. That's what I think is going to happen. That's where I think they're going to go in Something. season three is that, no, the Rayburn family is really going to get indebted to Bo Bridges. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. They're going to clean up because I think that if John wants to come back, he will be able to come back because... No, now, whether or not they're going to say like what happened to Marco, if they find if, if they actually find Marco's body, then people are going to think John killed him. But if they don't, and if and if Bo Bridges cleans it up, and then they're now now you have the whole Rayburns that are now indebted. Then it becomes a more like they they're trying to make this show like Breaking Bad. There's yes. a couple times that they yeah. it's pretty blatant, yeah. and that would be a way to kind of further that. But I kind of would like to see them get away from that. A little <laughs> so bit. that's your prediction for season. Three. I think so. Okay, Mark, your so prediction for season three. If we brought in a major star. Like an A-list, like a Mark Harmon to come in and like really <laughs> it, it offset the dynamic that we've established with Leguizamo and Bo Bridges being in two. I think that'd be the right way to go, but I want to see this still focus on the Rayburns. I, I have no idea what – I mean, I, I do predict that, that it's going to be those people that handle the mess that Kevin just created. I think that Meg is probably going to try to run somewhere again, and I don't know what's going to be the, the, the impetus for her coming back to Florida again. John Rayburn is going to realize – that his family is in danger or his family does need him, despite the fact that Diana said, don't come home tonight, which of all the nights to tell the guy right. not come home, it's probably not the best night, dummy. So <laughs> he's going to come back eventually for his family because this show is all about bloodlines and all about family, and I want it to remain focused on them. You want to bring in guest stars, you want to bring in A-listers, that's fine. I want season three to happen. Has it been greenlit? Do we know? Not yet. I, I, I want season three to happen, yet. and I want it to still focus on the family that we were focusing on the first two seasons. So my fear is, is season three is going to start with like a newspaper article from the Miami Herald, and it's going to be that Kevin's actually been arrested and is now going to go on trial. Because right. remember, the show was created by the people who did damages. They love legal shit. Yeah. So I'm afraid season three is going to be a long, drawn-out sort of legal battle where there's more investigation. Sissy SpaceX is going to have to get more involved. All the real... Kevin's going to threaten to uh, uh, like admit throw. that he did it to John. Yeah. Totally. He's not going to be able to I handle it mentally. Kevin's gonna, dead in season three. Yeah, everything's, which will be awesome. If Kevin's dead in season three, I can't wait. But I think it's going to be all about like the real like ills of this family coming to bear. But I just, when I think about season two of the show, I think about the billboard that I saw that advertised it. I was driving down the street and I'm on Highland I and there's a huge thing it. that said, I killed my brother. And I'm like, oh, subtle bloodline, real yeah. subtle. <laughs> and I feel like that's what season three is going to be. It's going to be on the nose. It's going to be a lot more of what we've already seen. I hope it's what you guys said. If it is... Lloyd, Jeff, Bo Bridges, and Leguizamo <laughs> primarily. Be. That'll be awesome because Leguizamo is fantastic. If they do start diverting away from the Rayburns, I think that's very smart. I'm afraid they're gonna go into like a more legalese way. I think that Kevin's gonna end up getting caught and I think that all the family is gonna get taken down by what gets revealed. You know, Jeff Bridges ain't a bad guy to bring into this show. That'd be great. That'd be great. Uh, I'm personally calling a burn notice bloodline Mashup. No, what I don't a know. Terrible. <laughs> Another Miami on Miami show. Uh, no, I, I'm I'm really on board with the, kind of the stuff that, that Christian said. I don't want to see it go into legalese thing. I want it to pick up right in that apartment with Marco on the ground bleeding mm -hmm. and O'Bannon showing up to Marco's place and Kevin looking at him and, and he's like, you gotta help me. And he's like, well, this and that. And they get it and something happens because O'Bannon, very underrated character. He's a total heel. He's always just like, he, poor guy is like the most scruff on television. And he's just like, always like his sister, Dom nah, this is a beard. Uh, he, he, like his sister dominates him. You feel terrible for the guy. Mom, Danny was his best pills. friend, but he's smarter than we think. He's just a guy that has had really bad luck and he's make, made horrible decisions. And somebody like Lake Wasamo has preyed on him and, and this we know. So the fact that, that, that Bo Bridges is now owns Kevin, Kevin's gonna reach out to him so there, there was gonna be blackmail. This whole, this whole season is gonna be the blackmail of the of the Rayburn family. But that's what this and season was. No, that's how no, it started. It wasn't. So much of it. Lowry did so. That's how it started. First yeah. episode. But let's yeah, not let's not forget tape. that going into this season, we're like, okay, they got to cover up how they killed Danny. Okay, and so there's gonna be some sort of showdown with Lowry. And, and Bo Bridges has that tape, by the way. Uh huh. Yeah. Bo Bridges has the tape. But but these are all things we didn't know going into season two. We had no idea that the, what who that character was gonna be. We knew like Wasama was gonna be on it. But there's so many 
many things that we don't know about season three if it happens. So, like, it, a lot of things resolve themselves very quickly. Some of them got really drawn out in season two, okay? But also, like, the whole arc with Kevin being an alcoholic and on coke, that thing was like, oh, is this going to keep going? And then it's done, and then we move on to something else. The whole thing with Lowry, it's like, oh, are we going to just be drawing out this whole season with Lowry? Nope, Lowry's dead. Now we move on to something else. So you have... You, you have that past continually coming back to haunt them, but we are able to move on to new pastures, even within the infrastructure of the Rayburns in the show. It would be nice to see the Rayburns actually do something intelligent because it seems like their, their family is smarter <laughs> than they're actually right. portraying on the thing. Uh, okay, that being said, I think we have our predictions. We gave our opinions on the show. Out of five sweaty cigarettes, what would oh. you give this season? <laughs> is five the best or the worst? Five is the best. <laughs> Let's In start with Florida, negative, negative okay. cigarettes. So I would have given season one four and seven fifths cigarettes. Okay. I give season two two cigarettes. Two uh, sweaty oh, cigarettes. Two sweaty man. cigarettes. And they're Newports. Uh, Ew. Uh, okay. Menthols, Mark Ellis. I'm going to go Virginia Slims. Mm. Sweet. And uh, first Lady season, like. I would give 4.75 out of five mm -hmm. sweaty cigarettes. This season, I will give 4.2. Out of five really? sweaty cigarettes okay. because I loved everything about this. At its worst, this show is still a very entertaining soap opera. At its best, it's the most riven drama on TV right now. What? Wow. Game of Thrones, yeah. motherfucker. Besides Game of Thrones, besides the phrase. Um, I will say that this particular sh season had its issues for sure. I still was intrigued. I was still locked in to find out what was going to happen. I think it needs to go in a completely different direction, like I said in the third, but I still care about the story right now i will say three and a half joints <laughs> wow. wow what do you give a good guy season one was definitely a 4.3 sweaty cigarettes wow. i would season, go 4.75 for season one okay. by the way. season season two three eight sweaty cigarettes Two point three eight, three point two eight, three point eight, three point eight sweaty cigarettes. Man, I don't know, Josh. You're giving us a lot of death. A lot of, a lot of, of sweaty oh cigarettes God, in there. Right back. Uh, I, it, just based simply on uh, they made the wrong turn. Like make one right decision in season two, and we might have a little bit different of a show. Uh, but I, that being said, I'm still very, very entertained by the show, and I will watch the hell out of season three. Absolutely. Thoroughly absorbed me from start to finish, even after, man, I'm going to pick up this dolphin. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> oh, really? my God. All right, real quick, around the table, Christian, where can people find you? Uh, Christian Harloff, Twitter, Instagram. Make sure you check out Schmoes every Thursday. Just go to YouTube, Schmoes Now. Mark Ellis. Uh, at Mark Ellis Live. And all you Floridians out there, come see me live at the Fort Lauderdale Improv July 14th through Ooh. the 17th. Will I kill somebody with a dolphin? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> a lot of sweaty cigarettes that weekend, Mark. A lot of sweaty cigarettes. Miss Pearl Raver. Uh, tweet me and tell me how wrong I was at Sasha Pearl Raver and uh, Instagram Sasha Pearl Raver. And Thursdays, I'll be with the Schmoes hanging out with you and hopefully playing games. Yay. And Mondays on TV Talk, where I talk about things that I like. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram. Collider TV Talk here every Monday. Guys, we're going to be doing a lot more series reviews, episodes reviews. You guys know our Preacher review every uh, every Tuesday uh, or every Monday after after TV Talk. So check out those, uh, the Josh McCuga Show on YouTube and Schmoes on Thursdays, guys. Thanks for tuning in to our Bloodline Review. Now go out, smoke one bloody, one sweaty cigarette. <laughs> Don't kill anybody with a dolphin we appreciate you guys watching as always put down the book pick up the remote <laughs> hey guys if you like this video click the thumbs up button also make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel it'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at collider